This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Arena. But before that, this video is brought to you by Captain Kiwi and Quentin Williams. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Arena map can be downloaded over the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Now I will say that I have seen the arena map released over at some third party sites prior to its release here on the Giants Mod Hub. I have looked at this earlier. It did list itself as kind of being a map in development. So I hadn't done a video up until this point, and I'm really glad to see that the map author has submitted it to the Giants Mod Hub because, as I said, this map is now available for all platforms. Let's read a little bit on the description. A modern and beautiful fictional multiplayer map. Arena includes seasons. This is a standard size map with a unique view of beautiful wild nature, two lakes, farmyards, and 21 large fields. The environment is very comfortable with space for five large farms, which may be used for standard agriculture, forestry, or productions. All standard features are available on the map, including a shop, animal dealer, points of sale. The map is based on a default seasonal growth plan. In addition, you'll be able to buy more plots for extra placeables like factory production. With that, let's go ahead and jump on in. Now, this is going to be the very first map that we're going to see after Precision Farming has been released. So Precision Farming is now going to be added to the list of mods that we use when we take a look at these maps. So we're now going to be using additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and Precision Farming. Now, this map is using the default generic soil map. We wouldn't really expect a map coming out the day after Precision Farming releases to be using a custom soil map after all. Also, if you load this map up in Farm Manager or start from scratch, everything you see here will be identical, except you will not own any land at the start. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. Zoom on out and go into the lands area. You'll see we start out by owning just field 10, which is right here. It is 9.74 acres in size and it's going to cost you $128 thousand dollars now over here we have the actual starting farm the starting farm is not owned at the start which is kind of interesting it is 14 acres in size two hundred thousand dollars basically and you'll see here at the starting farm we have our farmhouse we have a chicken coop we have a large greenhouse a cow barn and the manure heap as well as a vehicle workshop be sure to buy the main farmyard here if you intend to do any changes as far as the buildings go because you cannot sell any of these buildings and actually make them vanish unless you own the land if you accidentally try to sell a building before you own it it'll give you the option to sell but a building will not vanish and at that point you can't fix the problem because the sell option will no longer come up even after you buy the land now, we also have other buyable plots. They are going to be scattered around. They're going to look like this, and they're not going to be numbered. So we do have a buyable biogas plant, which is $971,000. We also have other buyable fields or farm areas or production areas scattered around the map. Also, we do have a buyable forest for $496,000. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This screen is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, if there is a field associated with it, what the field number is, and the size of the farmland. Now, on this map, you will notice that all of the viable plots, for the most part, are field size. So, unlike other maps where you have viable farmland that can include a field, but often includes other land outside and around the field. That is not the case with this map. This map, you're basically buying fields, and each field is its own unique farm land. So the field sizes and the farm land sizes are going to pretty much line up. So farmland one, which includes field one, is 27.56 hectares in size, and it is $2.4 million. 
Farmland 2, which is Field 2, which is 13.46 hectares in size, is $719,000. Now, we're not going to bother with going through every single farm, land, or field size and cost, but I will go ahead and slowly scroll through this list if you want to go ahead and pause the video at any point in time to get a closer look at the sizes of the farm lands, fields, and costs. You can go ahead and do that now. Now, if we take a look at our field calculator, we're going to see that our farm viable fields, I should say, are going to be listed here. And then the size of those fields are also going to be listed. As I said, this is going to line up with the farm land sizes based on how this map is laid out. So we're really not going to spend a whole lot of time here. Let's go back to our PDA. You will see that this map includes all of the standard crop types available to us here on Farm Sim 22. If we take a look at our crop counter, you'll see that we have the default generic crop counter associated with the map. And if we look at our precision farming screen, let's go ahead and expose the generic soil map and we'll see how that lays out across the PDA. So you can see here we have a nice swath of various field types or soil types scattered across the map. You can use this to determine which fields you may or may not wish to buy based on the field soil types. Let's go ahead and take a look at our prices screen. And one thing that I will say that as we kind of scroll through this list, you will see that we do have the ability to sell each and every product that we could grow in Farm Sim 22 here on the map, which is good to see. We also have the ability to sell all of our animal outputs, eggs, wool, and milk. If we move on down, we have silage, hay, straw, and grass sell points. And we also have a sell point for each and every production item that we could possibly produce on this particular map. So all of that is really great to see. We also have the ability to buy bulk lime, and we also have the ability to sell our stones. That is also very good to see. So we are going to give the map a full point with regard to having the ability to sell all of the included crops, animal outputs, and production points on the map. Take a look at our starting equipment. We start out with a very modest list of starting equipment. It is all new, well-maintained, and owned. We do have animals at the start. In fact, we have five brown Swiss cows and ten Holstein cows. Those are over at the main starting farm. They do start out with a little bit of hay and grass in their troughs. We do have contracts available to us, and we do start out with the large greenhouse as part of our production chain. Speaking of starting equipment, you can see your starting equipment is lined up right here at the shop. So you will need to transport this over to the main farm. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the farm and then we're going to start our farm tour. Coming in off the main road, we do have our farm here. We got our gate we open up. We have the Alpine farmhouse. We do have a dog. So if you, uh, you know, want to play with Fido, you can go ahead and do that. We have our sleep trigger here over on the side. And as I said earlier, if you intend to do any customizing of the farm, you will need to make sure you buy the farmland first. Because while you can sell all of the buildings here on the main farm, you can only sell them if you own the land. Now, in addition to the farm buildings that you can get rid of, you can get rid of the gate here, you can get rid of the hedge that we're going to see in a little bit, but all of these other decorative elements, these light poles, the firewood, this box, and a lot of the other aspects, you will not be able to get rid of the decorative aspects here on the main farm. So with that, we're going to give the map just a half a point with regard to can the farm be customized because, well, while we can sell the buildings after we buy the land, by the way, we cannot get rid of the various decorative elements. And as a result, we really lose some of the ultimate flexibility that we might have by wanting to delete out these buildings. 
We have our weather station. We have a large greenhouse, as I mentioned earlier. We can get rid of this hedge here, and then that will take us over to our chicken coop. This is just a base game chicken coop, so we really don't need to go in details as to where the triggers are, but we have the base game chicken coop there. Make your way back around. We do have our maintenance shop right there. Here we have our cows. We have our manure heap. And then we have just base game small cow shed here with the 15 cows that we start with. Triggers we don't really need to go over. And then we have a silage heap for our cows located right there. Like I said, the fences we can get rid of. The hedges we can get rid of. The buildings we can get rid of after we buy the land, but the various decorative elements scattered around the main farm here, we cannot get rid of. So for example, while we can get rid of the garage, we cannot get rid of the porta potty on the side of the garage, nor can we get rid of these large containers. Now that, let's go ahead and get set up for the fly around. We'll fly around the map, come back to the shop, get our Mahindra, and then do our final drivable tour. Let's gain a little bit of altitude and pull up the PDA so you can get a little frame of reference as to where we are. You can also kind of see the fenced area here. We do have a fairly large starting farm, which is really nice to see. It's not flat. We will have to flatten it out. It does have some undulations in the land. But it is interesting that we do not own it at the start. And it is a little disappointing that we can't get rid of some of the decorative elements that are a part of the starting farm here. Overall, the fields on the map are fairly flat. You can see right here, with respect to fields 8 and 9, they do have a bit of a rise to them, but it's nothing too terrible high. Let's go ahead and make our way around. And as I said, there are plenty of potential building sites on the map. In fact, there are two directly in front of us. One just below field four. And one just above field seven, located right there. As far as production items being available on the map, overall there are six production items available. Let me go ahead and pull that list up. We have two flour mills, GLW Production and Strig Langer are flour mills. We then have a sawmill, spinnery, biogas plant, and the greenhouse. We do own the greenhouse at the start. We have one of the two fuel stations located just below there. And we're going to continue to make our way over to the biogas plant. The biogas plant, as you can see, also has a lime fill trigger. We have three large pull through bunkers here at the biogas plant as well as two really large sheds. Now the way the biogas plant is oriented, it's going to be a little difficult to possibly use something like a belt to empty these bunkers because you're going to have to come all the way around and put them into the digester right there. Once we buy this land, we will have these triggers come up. So I'm not overly concerned about the lack of those triggers at this point. Just below field five here, we have another one of those kind of clearing areas. Now this one isn't overly flat, so you will want to 
landscape it a little bit, but you could use that as a viable area for a farm or other production items. We have our animal dealer just down below there. Our spinnery is located right here. We have our town. The second flour mill is located over here just north of field 21. I believe this one is GLW production over here. And it is a custom flour mill. Then we'll go ahead and loop on around and settle down here at the vehicle shop where once again we're going to grab our Mahindra and then do the drive around. With the vehicles already spawned here, we kind of already have a good idea as to where our vehicle spawn point is. We do have our customized repair self-trade trigger located right there. Let's grab our Mahindra. We do have a fairly decent area to get out of the shop. We do have this kind of trash can we've got to deal with, but over that, other than the light poles, decent sized area to get out of the shop. Go ahead and get in the first person perspective and make your way down around to our flour mill. That would be the GLW production, which is also a sell point. Then we'll make our way over to the sawmill. So overall, the map should run pretty good for all platforms. Uh, there really isn't a lot going on with the map. There's not a lot of decorative elements going on. Not a lot of extra buildings or anything like that. So we do have here at GLW a lime bulk buy point. We have our dump station. We have our interactive icon. And then we have our pallet spawn point over here. Again, this is set up as a sell point if we do not own it as a production area. Now if we make a right turn here, this is gonna take us over to the sawmill do have traffic on the map and they do appear to be moving along at a pretty good clip. And then this forest around the sawmill is viable. So we have our wood chip point. We have our log dump station, our log cell trigger, our interactive icon, and then we have our plank spawn point located right there. Now if we come out of here and make a right, this is going to take us back up to the main farm. We're going to hang a left and double back a little bit.
The map does not have a stone crusher. We do have a cell point that accepts stones. But if you're looking for a stone crusher on the map, you do not have one of those. Now one thing that can make this map a little bit of confusing is there are areas kind of placed on the map that could be cell points, could be production areas like the diner here, but we really don't have a good way over into that. They are not cell points, they're just decorative items, but like I said, it really can make you think, oh, I wonder if, I wonder if something is over there because I see what looks like a diner or what looks like the dairy. And here we have a fuel station. Located right here. And then around the corner. There's a lot of pedestrians walking around. A cell point. Right, based on how the PDA looked, I thought this was all interconnected. Separate entrance right here. We have our grocery, kind of farmer's market style cell point. Located right here. Like this, this is the big hotel that has come from Erlengrant. I like seeing that down here, kind of ground level. It gives it a completely different perspective as opposed to seeing it up way high like that. Now while we're touring the map, let's talk about some and review some of the scoring metrics we've got going on here. We're going to give the map a full point with respect to production because we do have six different production areas built into the map. Two flour mills, we have then a sawmill, spinnery biogas and the greenhouse which we own at the start we do have cell points for all of the base game production items as well as animal outputs and crops that we can grow so we're gonna give the map a full point on that regard here we have the spinnery so we have our dump station for our wool our interactive icon and our spawn point for the fabric With respect to can the farms be customized, we're gonna give the map a half a point because while we can sell the buildings after we buy the land, that's a caveat, we cannot sell a lot of the decorative items. We can sell and get rid of the hedges. We can get rid of the big fence that goes all the way around, but other things like some playground equipment, some dumpsters, porta potty, firewood rack, things like that we cannot get rid of. And as an ultimate result, our usability of that area as a custom farm area is, is kind of sacrificed. So we do have a bulk line buy point. We have our animal dealer located right there. We have our animal dealer cell point located right here. With respect to the buildings using the appropriate new texture technique and we didn't really look at the placeables or the paintable textures let's go ahead and take a look at that if we take a look at our paintable textures we do have a couple of interesting textures let's jump over to some land that we own field 10 Circle back to field 10 and paint some of these down. 
to see what they look like. So we have animal mud, asphalt, concrete, dirt, Forest ground, grass, gravel, plate, riverbank, rock, old style, and there we go. So here we have our grass, we have our gravel. Here we have our plate. Riverbank. Rock. That's that old time. And we do have custom textures that are also using the new 3D technique, which is good to see. So we are going to give the map a full point with respect to that. And we need to make our way over to the last few cell points and the biogas plant so we can really make a determination on how well the trigger markers are set up to then be able to issue a final score. Let's do a little bit more in cab driving. I think Field 5 has probably the biggest elevation change with respect to the fields. Because as I said, overall, most of the fields are pretty flat. Maybe some subtle, subtle heel, hills here and there. Here we have another fuel point let's turn around A little lost. The PDA is a little out of line compared to where we are driving. I feel that's why I was a little lost there. Things weren't lining up quite right. Here we have another lime buy point. This is going to be our second flour mill. So we have our dump station our interactive icon and our pallet spawn point located right there. This is then a cell point and this is where the stones are going to be sold. Now let's make our way over to the biogas plant. And I think at that point I feel pretty confident in saying that the trigger markers are located and are clearly marked so we will go ahead and give the map a full point on that regard so that gives this map a score of 4.5 out of 5 with respect to our scoring matrix i think it's a rather interesting map it should play as i said very very well for pretty much any player on any platform. Some of the fields are fairly large in size. It will work out to be a pretty decent multiplayer map. Although I would like to see the map having some more fields because 21 fields on a multiplayer map isn't gonna keep the farmers too busy 
for too terrible long before everybody owns the entire map. So we do have our line, another line, five point right there. We have three silage buckers as we saw in our drive around. And then once we own the biogas plant, we will be able to see the triggers that are going to show up right there. So guys, that is going to do us for our map tour of Arena. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you all think of this map? Is this a map that you are going to be looking to do single player or maybe even potentially multiplayer gameplay with? And until next time, Happy farming.